Bethesda's space sci-fi RPG is finally here, and there's quite a bit to unpack with this experience. Starfield is a massive game with just so many activities, mysteries, stories, and customization options. It has space shipbuilding, main quests, combat, exploration, character creation, outposts, side adventures, siding with factions, building relationships with companions, crafting high-level weapon mods, dialogue, uncovering legendary gear, mining iron and copper and other resources, looting and collecting credits. There is just so much to do in Starfield, an experience that I have been tackling for the last two weeks and investing well over 100 hours into it. The game very much has hundreds of hours of handcrafted content to take on, then procedurally generated planets could have you spending thousands of hours exploring them, jumping from galaxy to galaxy or from a beautiful habitable planet to a resource heavy rock. This is by far Bethesda's biggest game to date, in terms of both size and scope. This arguably may be the biggest game of the last few years, and with that said, a lot of this can be a bit overwhelming at first. There's just so much to learn, and early on it took me a decent amount of time to fully understand how much of this worked. So whether you're watching this now or in say six months, I want to give those new players a bit of a guide to Starfield. Of course, this will be spoiler free as I think everyone deserves and should experience this game for themselves, but also if you're still not sure if this is the game for you, check out my spoiler free review of the game. Anyway, Starfield definitely feels familiar, its Fallout 4 DNA is strong. This is a game that Bethesda has been building up to, and you see that throughout. But like in past BGS games, the most important thing to do is take your time. Do not skip side quests, build your relationships with your companions, and explore the galaxy. Right when you open up that character creator, you're going to be introduced to two very important features. One is your background, and one is your traits. While your appearance is something that may be more personal, to yourself, that's actually something that you can change later on in the game. There are certain locations, certain businesses called Enhance. You can go up there, I think it's pay between five and 700 credits, and you can fully customize your character. You can change genders, change everything. So it's not like something like this is permanent, but the other two factors in that character creator, they are. First off, with your background, you want to pick skills that are going to be immediately beneficial to yourself. I myself chose Space Scoundrel because persuasion, talking to different characters, it's just very important, especially if you don't want everything to result in and immediate bloodshed. But I can't say that's for everybody, as I know some people do want to immediately resort to the, the violence, the action, and that those options are certainly there. But of course, there are many other different types of skills that you can develop into the playstyle that you want, whether that be if you want to push for exploration, being able to scan fauna and flora, use your scanner's full capacity, or if you want to go the stealthy route, taking full advantage of deception and your ability to pickpock enemies or just steal items in general, like in past BGS games. Now, the second important part of the character creator, your traits. This is something that comes with advantages and disadvantages. I can't tell you specifically which ones to do, but I can tell you that some of them are more rewarding than others. Some of them give immediate gameplay boosts, such as, you know, where you specifically grew up on, which whatever planet it was, whether that be New Atlantis or Neon. But there are consequences with that because other factions will view you differently because you came from those locations. And your allegiance is more likely to be with maybe New Atlantis if you grew up on New Atlantis. So the Free Star Collective may be a little bit more weary of you. But I do have to say that one specific trait that I really do think a lot of people should pick up on is the mom and dad the trait. This is something that you have a relationship with your parents and they pop up throughout the game. This isn't just a one-off thing. And I think that it's really good for the role-playing experience. But again, this goes along with what you want to do. And there are some other ones. You can have your own mansion. That's also very cool. It is costly, but it's not like you're just getting a fully decorated apartment. You actually have this location in which you can fully customize it, something that Bethesda hasn't talked about that much. But you can also acquire some other locations by going to, say, New Atlanta's Realty Office, and you can buy your own apartment. So maybe that's something that you may want to skip over. But there's also the adoring fan. Maybe you want him as a companion. And then there's some other options like alien DNA. That's something that comes with some gameplay advantages as well. So the options are there. Mom and dad, though, specifically for myself, I love that relationship for the role-playing side of it. But also there are some gameplay benefits that come a little bit later on if you develop that relationship and you go through quest lines. And uh, I thought that was another thing that was very cool to be able to get some extra items from your own parents. And while I did mention earlier that the trait decision is a permanent one, it isn't quite. While you can't change out the traits throughout the experience, 
experience, you can remove them based on certain NPCs that you'll come in contact with. So for example, I was wanted, meaning that bounty hunters would track me down wherever I go, whether that be on the surface or whenever I get into an orbit of whatever planet, then then a big space battle will break out. If you become annoyed by this, it's a hindrance, you can actually go up to certain NPCs. Like I found a bounty hunter tracker within Sidonia, and by having a conversation with them, it eventually gives me the option to remove that trait. Same thing goes with mom and dad. You talk with them, you can remove it as well. And I'm pretty sure that goes for all of the specific traits. There is an option eventually with an NPC or somebody who is a part of that trait quest line of sorts, and you'll get that option to exit it if it is something that has become an annoyance or you just want to move on from it. Now, I do have to immediately say that you need to scavenge around. You're going to see a lot of different types of items and stuff, and a lot of it's going to seem like it's useless, but it really isn't, especially health items. You're going to see a lot of plus five this, plus three this, and while those items, the chunky beef, I think that's what some of them are called, I don't really care about picking up all of that. Um, I do think that it is important to pick up the immobilizers, the injectors, and stuff like that. You're going to see different color coding at the top of them. There are certain treatments, and as you go through Starfield, you're going to realize that once you come upon different alien beasts, or if you jump too far, or any different type of incident that you have in combat, you're going to need specific types of treatment. Now, over time, your illnesses do slowly, you know, fix themselves, but if you leave them untreated, you're going to have of different types of debuffs to your combat, whether that be that your oxygen meter goes a lot faster, or you're going to lose even more health when you get shot by a different enemy. That's just something to note. And that's why it is important with these different health items, the ones that I actually did choose to put in my favorites, it's med kits and trauma kits. You're going to see a lot of those, and those are like the main like stim packs from Fallout. Think of them as that, and that's very important to have those favorited because you're going to be relying on clicking those items in combat when things are when you're surrounded by multiple enemies now it is also very important to be observant of the main locations that you're exploring too because it's not just med kits and different weapons that you're going to be on the lookout for and maybe materials but magazines like in fallout you had bobbleheads and you also had the magazines with a little boost you're going to see them in a lot of the main locations whether that be in aquila city or in a uc colony ship they're they're hidden you know you're not going to see it always like very much right in front of you but they have little different types of boosts not necessarily just to your specific weapon classes, but some of them add different carry weight and if you see the different brands for some of these weapons, they'll actually give a little boost to that. So it's a, it's a nice little touch to, it further incentivizes exploration, something that I definitely love from the Fallout games that are again here in Starfield. Now, another thing with exploration and scavenging is you're going to see a lot of different materials and you're going to be using your, you know, your mining tool, the cutter, do not throw that away. You'll be using that to grab copper, grab iron and tungsten and any other materials you find. And that's why when you get into your different types of the workbenches, whether that be the weapon workbench, the research workbench. There's all kinds of different things that you can add on to your weapons, to your spacesuit, and that's why it's important to always be collecting these materials and throwing them into your cargo. Yes, a lot of them are heavy, but they're very important, especially if you want to continue to build out your, your character, your weapons, if you want to improve yourself. Now, the big difference between Fallout 4 and Starfield in this regard, if I remember correctly, is that you really were reliant on the perks. You know, you go into your perk menu, you'd upgrade certain things, and it would allow you more access to uh, your weapon workbench, but in Starfield it is a little bit different. You're more reliant on actually the resources of different planets. That's why scanning whenever you get approaching to a, a different rock or um, maybe a, a planet with lots of life, you want to scan ahead to see what resources are on the ground before you land so you're not wasting your time because these materials are very important to research mods. Now research mods, this is another workbench that you're going to come upon, but it gives you access to additional things that you can do at the other workbenches, whether that be for your space suit or your weapons and that's why it is going to be mentioning a lot of different rare resources that you only find on some of these rock heavy planets that you'll just usually pass by and not give a crap about but uh, again throwing all these items in your cargo for later on very important especially if you want to have the best weapons in the game the best loot and take advantage of the legendary gear that you already have and make them even better or outpost building in which you can develop tons of different settlement related items some extremely useful such as the resource extraction 
Stravigator, which allows you to passively gain resources from said planet that you're on and settled on. And planet exploration, especially the procedurally generated areas, isn't just a checklist of things to find, whether that be discovering different minerals and other rocks or whatever alien beast that you come upon. Because completing that entirety, you actually do get a slate, and this slate can be sold to different vendors for a decent amount of credits, and you actually can sell it to one specific uh, member of Constellation, Vladimir, and he gives you a premium for it. So that's another advantage of making the most of planet exploration and discovering everything to find, but you do have to jump different uh, biome to biome, because remember that just because you land in one area that may be a frozen plane, the next may be a giant forest, and then there's also hidden coastlines that you can also land at, some volcanic areas, so you do need to jump around, and there is different types of life in some of these areas, different aliens that you can only find in that specific type of biome. For example, one of them would be marine life, which I can find on the coastline of some planets, but obviously nowhere else on the planet. And another thing with storage, especially if you are on the ground, you're finding yourself over encumbered, you have companions, and if you have a companion right next to you, like in Fallout 4, you can use them for storage, throw, all, throw as much stuff as you can into them, and if you do want to customize them even further, you do have the option to change their gear up. Lockpicking returns once again, but unlike in the past where you're using a bobby pin, slowly moving it around, hoping it didn't break to open up a door, works a little bit different in Starfield. Obviously, there's still the layers of it, you know, nov Novus, uh, Master, you'll be able to unlock different tiers of it through the skills menu, but once you open up that digi lock for the first time, you're going to be introduced to a very unique puzzle, in which there sometimes are layers to it, sometimes more depending on how high it goes. I think it goes Novus, Advanced, Expert, and Master. And usually master has some really nice high level rewards within them but again you have to unlock it through skills and skills aren't just easily you know you can't just pop in points there as much as you want you actually have to earn that you have to open up different locks throughout the game so whenever you see the novice lock sometimes it's worth it just because you want to be able to get access to the advanced one then the expert then master now the thing is to know about this little system is that once you pop in one of the modules that's going to fit into this puzzle it's going to light up blue and if you actually look very closely you can see in the modules that are ahead after you unlock them you can use that specific module maybe for the next one that's why you need to be very considerate of how you piece this all together now another thing to note about this system is sometimes it can be overwhelming you look at it you'd be like okay i have no idea how this is going to work out the better option instead of going deep into it and then having to use all of your digi picks to you know redo stuff just immediately exit right to begin with i think you lose one digi pick but it's much better than losing four or five of them by undoing after you've gone deep into a master puzzle. That's just one thing to consider to make use of your resources the most. It can be a little bit complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it, it really is something that actually I really did enjoy myself doing these little puzzles. It's a nice new mini game addition to Starfield. Now, earlier on in this video, we talked about your background and some of the great starter skills that are a part of that character creation system, but there are also some other skills that need to be mentioned because they hide away uh, gameplay mechanics that you're going to want to have, such as the boost pack training skill. If you want to take Take full advantage of the booster packs that you're going to find through scavenging, you're going to want to have this enabled so you can jump high on a moon, jump on different structures, or jump up to an enemy that's shooting at you from above. Again, there are some other advantages to this by upgrading this boost pack training skill. I think you could jump higher, jump longer, so have that enabled. Another one, the stealth meter. This is also something that if you're going for a stealth build, you're going to want to have because Bethesda's enemy AI has always been notorious for being a little bit lackluster and wanting to know that if you're hidden or not. I think that's very important for those specific type of players going for that type of build. Now, ship targeting. If you're surrounded by multiple vessels all shooting at you at once, you're going to want to have this in which you can specifically target different aspects of of an enemy ship, whether that be the engine, the shields, or whatever weapons that they have. Uh, this is great. I think it slows down time a little bit, and it just it makes picking apart these enemies a lot easier. And do understand that a lot of these skills lock behind them other gameplay benefits, such as the piloting skill. This is something that I almost immediately went for adding. I think if you eliminate different ships, you can increase this skill, you're able to upgrade it, and it allows you access to pilot different types of ships, some of them more superior. Like, I think the best ships are the class C, and that's not something that you can immediately pilot. So sometimes you'll come upon an enemy ship, you'll eliminate it, you'll get on board, and you'll realize you can't pilot it because it's just it's too good. And that is something that you got to build your way towards. You have to develop your character. 
building relationships with the companions is also another big aspect of the role-playing side of Starfield. This can lead to romance, it can lead to commitment, but your decisions matter. Understand that if you go on a full crusade, eliminating everybody in a city of Neon, uh, New Atlantis, or do something very negative, your characters will hate you, they will walk away, and sometimes you'll actually have to walk up to them and persuade them not to leave you. You'll have that conversation. Just understand that your decisions matter within Starfield, and your companions will react accordingly. Now, also, when you are walking about some of these cities, the main hubs, the main locations, you don't want to necessarily be walking around in your spacesuit, and you don't have to go to your menu and just change out. You can actually hide your spacesuit and helmet. There is an inventory option. I think it's like LB... Just, uh, this is something that'll be enabled once you're on breathable environments, and it's just, if you want to fit in with the population, be a little bit stylistic, especially if you're playing in third person, you're going to want to have this enabled. Another big thing, if you're on some of these bigger planets, these bigger cities, and you're having trouble finding your way about, and you're on a mission, use your scanner. Your scanner actually points you in the right direction, it'll get you to your waypoint. It's not something that'll help you identify specific vendors, that is another issue that I have with Bethesda and uh, some of the UI that they made for this game. But if you are on a mission trying to find your way about, use that scanner, it points you in the right direction. Now, if you are on a planet, this is also another thing that helps with traversal. You can actually easily fast travel to a different system or planet just by setting course. So say if you're on Jemison, you're exploring the world and you just wanna jump back into a mission, you have the mission selected, you can just click set course and it'll send you on your way. It'll automatically chart the course and you click X and there you go. It automatically takes you where you need to go. Sometimes when you are looting and scavenging different items in a space pirate base or a vessel, you are going to come upon contraband. This is high level loot. Sometimes you'll see that they're worth like 15,000 credits, which is crazy. And you're going to want to maximize this, but you can't directly go into free star or UC colony spaces like their planets, their orbits, because what's going to happen is your, your items are going to be scanned. They're going to find the contraband. They're going to end up presenting you with the option, which is you're going to attack them. And some of you probably don't want to have that big fight in which now you're wanted. You've ruined your relationship with them. So instead, what you're going to want to do, so you're not arrested, don't have to do with any of that, you're going to want to go to spaces outside of there that they don't control. So once you have access to the Crimson Fleet, once you have access to their quest line and you can go into their space called the Key, you can sell it to their vendors. But there's also other options there that we'll talk about in a second. But there's also another place. This is one that I found. It's called the Den. This is, I believe, in the Wolf system. You go inside there, you go to their outside space structure, you can meet a trade Trading authority individual in there, you can trade the items with that because trading individuals, not like the actual terminals, but the actual individuals, they will buy this contraband from you, and that's how you maximize the credits that you can get from this high level loot. Now, with a place like the key, the Crimson Fleet, you can also unlock shielded cargo. Shielded cargo pretty much does exactly what you would think it. It makes your contraband undetectable and it makes you able to land in Freestar or UC Colony spaces and then sell it directly to these trading authority individuals that are on these planets. That's the other way to circumnavigate this if, if you want to. And then you can also obviously invest into certain skills like deception, in which I think you get like a 10% booster in which they won't be able to detect this certain type of loot. So there are options there at the very least. Just don't make the mistake of jumping to a system like Freestar and then expecting that there isn't going to be consequences, especially if you have contraband on board and you haven't invested in the necessary skills or the ship parts. One of the major selling points of Starfield is your ship and being able to fully customize it. You can change the interiors, you can change the exteriors, change the colors, and it is quite a bit of fun changing up how your ship looks. But I do think one thing that you need to know early on is that this is more of a late game feature. Now that's not saying that you can't customize your ship because there are a variety of ships that you can come into contact with, you can own them, and you can customize them a bit by upgrading. That's actually the first thing that you really should prioritize over for customizing it fully, especially with the limited credits that you're going to have, because fully customizing your own ship, this is something I did late game, and I actually didn't even fully invest into the shipbuilding skill, so I wasn't taking advantage of the best uh, ship parts. So what I was creating was a very limited ship in which it cost over well over 100,000 credits, and I don't feel like I got the best, the most out of it. And that's why I think early on, you're gonna be improving your grav drive, you're gonna be improving your weapons, 
your shield. You can also go into your ship builder mode. You can change up your cargo. You can change up the interiors of your habs. That's actually one thing I recommend. You can put a workshop on your ship. That's something that is extremely beneficial. And cargo, that's another thing that's really important because you're going to end up having a lot of different types of loot that you're going to want to have in your inventory. And a lot of them are really, really heavy resources. Something that you don't want to be dragging around as you explore planets or take on different quests. So ships, very much I, I recommend upgrading over building, at least in the beginning part of the game. Once you get through a number of quests, once you have the necessary credits, I think by, by the time I started to fully customize my own ship, I had like around 800,000, and this was near end game. Now, again, there's a lot of content, a lot of quests to take on, and time flies by, so come back to that later on and take fully advantage of it once you've invested into the skills, especially the ship building ones in which you have some improved modules and then there's there's some even better ones as you uh, progress through that system. Now, since we are on the subject of your ship, there are actually a number of other details that you need to know about. One of which is that if you end up losing your companion, this was a big problem that I had in Fallout 4 with Nick Valentine. I could not find him for the life of me. I think it took me about three months until I eventually realized I left him on a rooftop for some reason. But in Starfield, you can actually very easily get your companions back and find them by just going to your ship menu for your crew, and it's a data menu and then you can assign the companion that you're searching for to your ship and they'll spawn there. Very beneficial feature. I'm glad that Bethesda included it. Also with crew members, if you want to have some that have expertise like a surgeon, you can find them most of the time hanging around bars in Aquila City or New Atlantis. And this isn't just one thing with surgeons. There's all kinds of different crew members that have specialties with skills and they're great benefit to your ship, especially with whatever type of build that you're trying to go for for your ship in terms of combat or in terms of exploration. Now, Starfield very early on gives you access to a ship and tells you, well, go on your own journey, have your own fun. I was talking to some other creators and a lot of them just went off and did side adventures before even tackling any of the main quest line stuff. And that's actually something that I fully recommend. Faction quests are the most rewarding in the game. If you're looking to get legendary items, legendary gear, weapons, some of the coolest, rarest stuff, and a bunch of credits, take on those quests for the UC colonies, take on those quests for the Free Star Collective, and there's also a bunch of additional quests that are unlocked, it really is important to take your time. This is a lesson that you really have with all Bethesda games, but there are some very important stuff that you're going to miss if you skip through it and just mainline the, the main quest line. And while it is very much enjoyable, this is a Bethesda experience in which taking your time gives you great benefits. Patience. Patience is the most important lesson that I would actually say that Starfield, that I can tell you with Starfield. Now, it also is worth mentioning that once you are in space, when you are nearing another ship or cargo in space, you can actually dock once at under 500 meters away. This is just an important thing to note because of the fact that once you're, you know, pushing full force at a at a location or whatever. You just want to make sure that once you get under that 500, you can click X, you can dock. And that's actually something that is relevant to anything that you find. Mineral deposits or an enemy ship that you've eliminated. Right when you get under 500, that's when you can loot it on up. And on that note of docking with different structures or ships in space, another big thing to know is the fact that how you conduct yourself in combat will decide if that enemy ship that you've been blasting blasting away is going to explode, or if it's just going to go offline with all of its systems. And ship targeting, that's a perk that I mentioned earlier on, it's very important to utilize that as you can take off the weapons, you can take off the shields, but do not try to be very careful with the weapons that you're using. So you'll have different types of weapons that you can access, some of them you can change out. Missiles, pretty much, they do exactly what you'd expect, they destroy. But if you use some of the, the EM weapons or your lasers, that'll help take those uh, enemy ships offline. You can board them and that's when you can go after those bounty hunters you can loot up the ship and you can ultimately maybe even take ownership of that ship taking it to a port you can register it and then that is yours you can fully customize it that's not something that is available for all ships but it's something that i did see with certain bounty hunter ships that i came in contact with and it was pretty cool being able to have that as a feature now it is also worth mentioning once you get into those ship cabins and you're exploring about always make sure to go to the cargo look for materials
materials that are there, grab them, and also go to the captain locker on these ships and take with the credits and anything that is there. That is a point that is not necessarily just relevant to enemy ships, but also some ally ships. I always go to the cargo, always see if I have the option of taking the items without it, you know, being stealing because I haven't invested into that specific skill set. Now, I do want to mention one thing. Don't play this game like it is No Man's Sky. Don't try going directly to a planet because that's not going to work. But sometimes you will see like a blue icon in space. You can click on that. I think you click A on your controller and you can just immediately jump to that system that way. But you do need to have your grav jump uh, charged up a little bit. If you have a couple of points into your grav jump, you almost immediately jump to that, that system. But if you only have like one or so, it takes a little bit longer. So, you know, moving points from your missile, taking all that down to one or zero and then putting like five or six in a grav, you'll jump within seconds. Now, last but not least, this is a big one. Within Starfield, you're going to be jumping very often from planet to planet, and sometimes you're going to see anomalies, and sometimes you're going to see very interesting looking temples. And once you get inside these temples, this is where things can get a little bit confusing, because what you need to do is you're going to need to jump up, and there's going to be glowing markers indicators that go on and off, and you have to jump from each one very quickly to complete this temple. I've talked to other creators that sat there not understanding, and there's actually an audible noise if you pay very closely attention that if you jump from one indicator to another, it goes faster and faster, and then eventually the temple is completed. So this is just something to, worth of noting, because I know people are going to be looking up for guides, not understanding how to proceed forward with this specific mechanic, and hopefully this helped a little bit. And hopefully this entire video helped, because Starfield is a massive, overwhelming experience. There is a lot to learn, and myself, I'm still learning certain mechanics and how they function. But anyway, what do you make of Starfield? What do you make of these mechanics? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value and consider subscribing for more videos like this and I shall see you later.